Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Egypt Travel Podcast, and this, our 14th show. This isn't going to be a long episode, but it's going to be an important one, because I'm going to be giving you the real tea on the big T in travel, TripAdvisor. If you've been listening to the Egypt Travel Podcast for a while, you know that I am not a fan of of TripAdvisor. I've said it before and I will say it again. TripAdvisor might be great for other places. It might be wonderful for planning a trip to Paris or India or Japan or Jakarta. I don't know what it's like in those places, but I do know what it's like for Egypt and it is horrendously unreliable for planning a trip to or around Egypt. I know a lot of people use TripAdvisor and rely on it for planning and even sometimes booking travel to a lot of places around the world. And by all means, if it works for you elsewhere, please continue to use it elsewhere. My area of expertise is Egypt and the Middle East, and I only have in-depth on-the-ground knowledge to objectively judge the quality of what I see on TripAdvisor for Egypt. And spoiler alert, by the way, the quality is absolute crap. And in this episode, I'm going to tell you all about why it's crap and what you can do instead to get good, reliable, trustworthy recommendations for the tourism industry in Egypt. Okay, as I previously mentioned, anyone who listens to this show, here's my frequent references to how bad TripAdvisor is for planning travel to Egypt. The recommendations are crap, the reviews are crap, and the top 10 lists are really crap. And I know this because I know these places, like in real life. I've been to most of them personally and seen what they're really like. I've secret shopped a lot of accommodations in Egypt over the years, from five-star hotels down to .5-star hotels, literally. I also get constant feedback from listeners of the show who email me and constantly tell me about their horrible experiences with TripAdvisor in Egypt. People who use TripAdvisor often in other places, and they just find it unreliable when they tried to use it for Egypt. If you remember back from the last Q&A episode I did, one of the questions actually came from a show listener who wrote in about how he had emailed about a dozen guides from TripAdvisor trying to find one to hire for his trip there. And he said the responses ranged from, well, non-responses to, to quote him, wow, they didn't even read my email. Now, there are a lot of reasons for this, and one of them is that there are a lot of low-quality and even scammy guides in Egypt, and the cream of the crop usually don't need to advertise on sites like TripAdvisor because they stay constantly booked through referrals from other people who know them and know that they're top quality. Now, many great quality guides do advertise their services, so seeing a tour guide or a tour company or a service provider in Egypt being listed on TripAdvisor or elsewhere isn't by itself a sign of low quality. Don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm saying. But at least on TripAdvisor, you're rolling the dice. And as many listeners have attested themselves, you really get responses ranging from non-responses to the truly bizarre when you just throw darts at the TripAdvisor dartboard in trying to find reputable and good quality guides through TripAdvisor. You also waste a whole lot of time and you still don't know what you're going to get in the end. And remember, as I've said before, a bad guide can ruin your trip, your trip of a lifetime that you've waited forever for and spent thousands of dollars already on. Such dice roll risks are just not advisable in a place like Egypt. Now let's talk about TripAdvisor's hotel listings and their recommendations and reviews for hotels and why they're not trustworthy either. First, TripAdvisor is having a problem worldwide with fake reviews and even, I've read, with adjusting aspects of reviews based on whether a hotel or service provider advertises with TripAdvisor and gives them money. That's a super shady practice to begin with that should tell you right off the bat that their recommendations and reviews overall are not by any means truly legit and that you're probably not seeing the whole picture but rather an improperly curated one based on whether the property or the provider has given money to TripAdvisor or not. So there's that shady practice. But there's also this bizarre obsession with TripAdvisor among hotels and restaurants and service providers in some places, especially in Egypt. They will literally hound the hell out of customers to give them positive reviews on TripAdvisor on the spot and often under duress. I've heard horror stories of places not letting customers leave or tour companies not letting clients out of a vehicle until they left them a positive review on TripAdvisor while they watch and read over their shoulders. 
Now, this is a practice that TripAdvisor as a company can condemn publicly all they want, but they can't control the fact that it happens a lot and it affects the quality and objectivity of their site's content. There are also a lot of fake reviews for small hotels and restaurants in Egypt on TripAdvisor. Properties in Egypt even sometimes pay review farms to leave fake reviews. So they look like they're coming from legit travelers who have traveled all over the world and reviewed places all over the world. Even some big five-star hotels in Egypt with worldwide international brand names in Cairo have paid for fake social media to fool travelers into thinking that they're more beloved and awesome than they really are. So just beware, okay? Fake and even forced or coerced reviews on TripAdvisor in Egypt is a super pervasive problem. Another reason that you can't trust TripAdvisor in Egypt is their notoriously inaccurate top 10 lists that tend to dominate the Google search rankings for some unexplicable reason. Now, Google has some of the smartest people in the world working for them, obviously, yet they can't or won't filter out these horrible and notoriously crappy top 10 lists that TripAdvisor's site compiles for different locales based on who knows what inexplicable criteria. And actually, I wouldn't even be surprised in the least if you had to actually pay or quote unquote advertise or do some other type of business with TripAdvisor in order to get into one of these top 10 lists. These lists parade around as objective travel journalism, especially in search results. And when you're searching for top 10 hotels or top 10 restaurants or top 10 things to do in a city, they usually come up in the Google search rankings. But the problem is that they're almost never really the top 10 of anything or even close. Now, part of that may be because TripAdvisor factors in whether a property or restaurant advertises or has some sort of premium account. I don't know. But another factor is that skewed reviews skew what's considered top 10 or top anything. For example, if a decently priced, decent three-star hotel property in Cairo, for example, and there are a zillion of these, has lots and lots and lots of people saying they had a nice stay there and giving them a five out of five rating, they liked the staff, it was a great experience, it might make it into the top 10 list on TripAdvisor for the top 10 hotels in Cairo, even though this three-star hotel is nowhere near being in the top 10 hotels in Cairo. There are way more than 10, even four-star properties in Cairo, much less five-star properties. So it would be absurd for a three-star property or a two-star property to rank above a four- or five-star hotel in terms of the top hotels in Cairo. But TripAdvisor lets that happen all the time. The same goes for restaurants. In fact, you know what? Just look up the TripAdvisor top 10 hotels or restaurants for any city that you know well. If you live in a large city for your city, or if you don't, if you travel to a large city often, or you've been there a lot and you know the city well, and see if you agree with TripAdvisor's top 10 lists for that city. You can use your own personal knowledge and compare what comes up, and it'll be nowhere near accurate if you compare what you see with what you have personal knowledge of. So the chances are very high that the top 10 list that TripAdvisor generates for any city will be crap, or more likely a few good ones mixed in with a few no-names. But it's by no means the expertly curated list you're expecting when they advertise and push it on you as a top 10 list of anything for any city. So that's yet another reason why you cannot trust TripAdvisor in Egypt. And some of these reasons would apply to many other countries and cities as well, I'm sure, but especially in Egypt. In fact, one of the reasons I decided to do an entire episode warning travelers about relying on TripAdvisor for Egypt is because I saw a couple of news and travel blog articles recently about how similar problems with TripAdvisor were occurring in other countries too. Like, for example, the homeless shelter in Scotland that made it into TripAdvisor's best places to stay list in the UK, or the fake Michelin quality restaurant that an Italian newspaper created and got lots of rave reviews for, by the way, to prove how easy it was to game TripAdvisor. Or even more astonishing and kind of hilarious is the restaurant that was ranked the number one restaurant in all of London in November of 2017 on TripAdvisor. That, now get this, that was completely 100% made up. It did not even exist. I'm not exaggerating. Google this for yourself and read about it for yourself. I read it in the Washington Post actually. Otherwise, I might have had a hard time believing it even by TripAdvisor standards. But I kid you not, the TripAdvisor top restaurant in London in November 2017 was this place called The Shed at Dulwich, which was a completely fake, made-up restaurant. All the reviews for it were fake. It had rave reviews. Everything was fake. Yet TripAdvisor's algorithm kept promoting it higher and higher up the rankings until it reached number one. 
And this wasn't even a young TripAdvisor back in the day going through growing pains and trying to get their tech right 10 years ago or so. This was TripAdvisor as recently as the end of 2017. So if TripAdvisor can be gamed that easily and that enormously in a place like London with so many highly critical eyes watching their food and hospitality scene, just imagine how easy it would be to put absolute crap on TripAdvisor in places like Egypt and throw some fake reviews up there and suddenly have TripAdvisor start telling you that some Ebola-infested trash dump is the swankiest and most highly rated place around. So you get the picture, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I don't have any axe to grind with TripAdvisor at all. I've never been in competition with them in any way. I don't use the site for my own personal travel. I've never had a bad experience with them because I don't use them. I rarely even give them a second thought, except when they pollute my Google search results with their fake top 10 lists for a destination that I'm trying to research. But TripAdvisor really does need to clean up its act. So until it does, I have to strongly recommend against relying on TripAdvisor for any serious Egypt trip planning. Instead, go with the travel blogs. Go with resources like we're creating here for you with this podcast if you want recommendations for things that aren't crap. You know, in general, investing the time to find and research and read and look into and become familiar with travel blogs is great because travel blogs, the good ones, have curated recommendation lists and they come with a lot more context and description and relevance it's not just an algorithm it's not just fake reviews or it's not fake reviews at all um it, it's a curated descriptive contextual report on the travel bloggers actual objective opinion and if you find and follow the good ones the advice is coming from people who have likely stayed in all types of places all over the world and dined in all types of restaurants in many countries so they really know if the food they're eating is truly uh, amazing and unique. And they're not just saying that because they were hungry, or in some cases in Egypt, because the restaurant stood over them and pressured them to write a TripAdvisor review or offer them a free drink if they did right there and then. Or if it's a tour company because they were afraid that the tour company might not show up the next morning and take them to the airport like they're supposed to if they didn't comply and write them a coerced review right there on the spot the night before. All right, so that's the real T on why I'm not at all a fan of using the big T, TripAdvisor, to plan trips to Egypt or plan what you're going to do or where you're going to go within Egypt. You've got plenty of other resources out there that can help you with Egypt trip planning, like this podcast, the Egypt Travel Podcast, like the Egypt Travel Blog. Both of those are completely free and super detailed resources that we put out because we want to do our part in helping you with your upcoming and future travel to Egypt. You can always email me personally to john at egypttravelblog.com, J-O-H-N, John. You know, some months and some seasons are busier than others for me and some are lighter, but I do try my best to respond to every single email that comes in, big or small. Whether you bombard me with 30 questions or you just have one question, it doesn't matter. So don't be a stranger if you've got questions or if you want advice or help or whatever. I've also met up with listeners of the show and readers of the blog in person, in Egypt, in the U.S., even in Europe. I've done Skype calls to answer questions because people have requested it and so on and so on. Oh, and speaking of Skype calls, quick shout out to Jordan, who was the listener that I did a Skype call with recently to answer all of her questions. She was going to be traveling around Egypt as a solo female, and she had a ton of questions. And I was just like, yeah, it'll be easier just to jump on a call and go through these instead of trying to type it all out. So we did exactly that, and she had a wonderful time in Egypt, and she's actually become an Instagram friend now. So I'm serious when I say that you should feel totally welcome to reach out to me, john at egypttravelblog.com, or you can follow me on Instagram and reach out to me there too. I am at jetset.com. Ninja, Jetset.Ninja on Instagram, which also happens to be the domain name of my broader global travel blog, www.jetset.ninja. Anyway, and of course, you can always visit EgyptTravelBlog.com for more articles and even more stuff coming out there in the next few months. A few surprises are in the works. I'm not going to let you know exactly right now what they are. But we're going to be upping our game uh, with Egypt Travel Blog, Egypt Travel Podcast. And I think you're going to love it when you find out what's coming down the pipeline. But with that, I am out again. We have another episode coming up really soon, I promise. And we'll see you then in the next episode. But for now, ma salama. Ma salama.